What's up, everybody? JJ Shankles, the Goat Toasters, back with another episode of your daily tech news. We're going to start off today in the hardware realm. Intel's new CPU, the i9-10900K. Still not sure if that's exactly how you're supposed to say it. It's a very long string of numbers, and I don't know how they expect people to get these things straight. But benchmarks of this new CPU are now being put out, and it's another story of too little too late with this CPU. It's fast, sure, but AMD still takes the lead in a lot of key categories. In max core clock speed, yes. Yes, they have now taken the lead back from AMD, but them still not getting down to that 7 nanometer process size on the transistors of this chip means their L1, 2, and 3 cache are still not as big as AMD, which provides huge performance for the user, and overall multi-threaded processes for this CPU still can't keep up with AMD, what AMD did last year. And so it's a good time to be on Team Red. It's good to see Team Blue fighting back, but it's going to take a lot from them to be competitive again. Second story is still Intel news. They've acquired the company Rivet Networks. They're the creators of the killer network card. It was a network card with a big K on it. As with most acquisitions, it's uncertain exactly what Intel wants with this acquisition. There's a lot of intellectual property Rivet Systems has, and Intel could be looking at for their ne next network cards. On to some video game news. Doom Eternal has reversed their decision to put out a kernel-based anti-cheat software. Kernel-based means it would go on your computer and would really slow down the system. When they did release it, a lot of users complained that their systems were slowing down while playing the game. This new non-kernel-based system will only be running while playing multiplayer games, and they promised it will close when you close out of the program. Definitely a good thing to see a company come go back on something so quickly when there is an uproar because keeping players happy is kind of the point of video games and if they can't do that they really need to assess their priority. The next story is a huge surprise of a video game company keeping people happy. EA, you never thought I'd say that with keeping people happy. They've released the source code for Command and Conquer, Red Alert, and Tiberian Dawn. Gamers thought this announcement would just be about their new upcoming re-release of a remastered collection of Command and Conquer games, but it's really exciting when they release source code because that's the base code and it allows modders to really get in there and change things around. So you can make them put new skins on there, create new characters, create new game modes even. It's fully unlocking the game for modders to be able to adjust any part of it that they want. So it'll be really exciting to see what they come out with on the other side. So if you enjoy modding video games or even playing modded video games, Command & Conquer is going to be the next big one. On to the mobile news, Apple's new update will help people that use masks while out in public. iOS 13.5, when it does notice you're trying to use face unlock while using a mask, instead of it being able to recognize you with the top half of your face, or with being able to see it through the mask. This one, it simply detects there's a mask and takes you directly to the password or passcode phrase to get you into your phone. This does keep your phone fully secure and doesn't allow you to lock with half your face exposed because that might be less secure, but it does save you a little bit of time to not have to sit there and wait for the face unlock to keep trying and then to fully fail and then give you the screen to get into your passcode. It'll take you directly there. Saves you a little bit of time, not a full fix, but it's nice that they put it out so quickly. More 2020 news, Apple and Google have both released APIs for public health agencies to be able to develop apps for contact tracing. An API isn't an app for these people to use. An API is a toolkit for people to use to develop these apps. Super cool that Apple and Google have both released them, and they said number one priority was security and safety for users of these apps in the end. And more Google news, the Google Pixel 4a might be delayed even again. It was thought June 3rd would be the date, because that's the date of the next beta for the Android operating system comes out, but there are leaks now that it might be pushed all the way till July. So if you're waiting for your next budget phone, you'll have to wait a little bit longer. But that's just kind of the state of 2020. A lot of things are getting delayed, supply chains are getting maxed up, so it will take a little bit longer for that to be fully released. And big news from NASA, they are about to launch the first astronauts from the U.S. in over a decade. The last launch from U.S. soil was back in July 4th of 2011. Since then, we've been sending astronauts up on Russian rockets launching out of Kazakhstan. And this will also be the first manned flight of a SpaceX rocket. So there's a lot of firsts coming with this one and a lot riding on it. I will for sure be covering more on this channel. Subscribe so you don't miss that one. Big news from Facebook, they wanna take on Amazon as an online shopping site. Reading through what they're proposing, I'm not sure if I totally agree with it. They say users will want to socialize more while shopping online. I don't think Facebook knows users. I personally do not want to socialize with anyone on Amazon. I want to get on there, buy something cheap, have it shipped to my house. And I don't want to go to a store. I don't want to go deal with people. That's why I use Amazon. If I wanted to go talk to someone, I'd go out to a store or use Facebook to talk to someone or use Amazon to buy something. 
kind of a weird mix that Facebook decides to get into. Maybe they're onto something big here. The opposite of what Facebook wants is what Volkswagen is doing with selling their new electronic cars only online. They're bypassing the dealers entirely. They want to use the dealers to facilitate handing off the car and doing test drives with the car, but to do all of the purchasing online. That way you don't have to hustle with a salesman trying to talk the prices lower and get deals on this and that. They want it all to be seamless through the website. No one wants to go bartering for your next car and knowing how good you can barter means a huge discount on your car. This is definitely the future of cars. Being a young person, I would love to buy my car online. If I could go in and see it, test drive it once, make sure it is the car I want, and then actually pay the money. But all the shopping, that can just be done online. I think Volkswagen has a big win with this idea right here. But that about wraps up our episode today. If I, anything I said was infactual or any stories I missed, make sure you hit, comment them down below and I will bring them up on the next episode. And while you're at it, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button down below so you don't miss any of my upcoming episodes. I wanna thank you guys for sticking around to the end. I appreciate every single one of you. Hope you guys have an amazing day. Stay safe out there and I'll see you again tomorrow. Go Toaster out.